the cash book. The cash book is our topic of discussion today. In our today's topic, we are simply going to talk about how do we treat uh, when the money is coming in and how do we record when the money is going out. So the cash book will talk about uh, either the cash in hand or the cash at the bank. So it is purely about money in and money out, the cash in hand and the cash at bank. So when we receive money in cash, we debit the cash. When we receive money in check, we debit the bank. When we pay money using cash, we normally credit the cash. And when we pay money using a check, we normally credit the bank. So we can record those to answer on those transactions you want to call the cash. We have got three types of cash books. Number one, which is what we call the symbol column. The symbol column cash book. The single column cash book. The single column cash book is basically the cash and bank accounts when they are separate. When we were doing the ledger accounts, at one point we were opening the cash account. And at another point, we were opening the bank account. Those key accounts, the cash account and the bank account. When they are like this, when they are separate like this, we normally call it single column cash book. When they are maintained separately, it is known as the single column cash book. The single column cash book. It is simply the ledger account for the cash at the bank when they are separately maintained. That one, we are not going to talk about it here. That one, we are not going to talk about it here simply because we have done it severally. In the ledger accounts that we have done, we were holding the cash and the bank account. When the cash was being received, we were debiting cash. When we were paying by cash, we were crediting the cash. The same case happens to the bank. When we receive a check, we debit the bank. When we pay using a check, we credit the bank. That is a single column cash book. The cash and the bank accounts are separate. Then we have got what we call the two column cash book. The two column cash book. The two column cash book. The two column cash book, it is now going to be the cash book where instead of having the cash and the bank accounts separate, we can have it as a single account. And that single account whereby we have the cash and bank combined is known as the two column cash book. Two column cash book. Let me look for another. Can you kindly adjust your mic because you are disappearing a bit? I'm disappearing. You're sounding quite faint here. Yeah. I don't know why. Because that is it tried to adjust. So for the two column cash book, we are going to have it like this. We are going to have the date, the column to record the details, the column to record the cash and the bank.
I can see there is a refraction there. Don't want it to be on the refraction side. Let me repeat it here. The cash and the bank. Then the same columns are going to repeat on the other side. The date, the details, the cash, and the bank. So we are going to have two identical signs. From where we have the double lines to the right, we know it is known as the credit. And this one records the payments. From where we have the double lines, the left is the debit. And this one records the receipts. The payments is simply money out. The receipts simply money in. So when we receive money, we record it on this side. So we shall write the date when the money was received, where the money is coming from. And if it was received in cash, we record it under the cash column. If it was received in form of a check, we record under the bank column. The same case happens now when it happens to be payments. If it is payment, you record the date the payment was made. To who? or what expense did we pay? Then if it was a cash payment, we record under the cash. If it was a bank payment, we record under the bank. I want us to use the examples, huh? the past paper questions that I shared so that we can illustrate what I'm actually saying. Can you open that document that I shared this evening on the cash? Which one, Malimu? You shared two documents. I was talking about. Ah, uh, huh? sorry. The one that is about the cash book. Leave around the petty cash book. The one about the cash book. The cash first, book, past paper questions. Exactly. Cash book, first paper questions. The question that was tested in June 2018, question 4A, it was requiring the candidates to prepare two column cash book for Thomas. It was requiring the students to prepare a two column cash book for Thomas. So the question reads that the following information was obtained from the books of Thomas for the month of January 2018. January 1 started business with the capital in the bank, 10,000 and the cash, 20,000. You start by recording that. And we all know when the capital is introduced in the business, when we talk about cash and the bank, we shall be receiving that money from the owner of the business. We shall be receiving that money from the owner of the business. So from the business perspective, the business is receiving money from the owner. We are actually going to record it as a receipt. The business is receiving money from the owner. So come here and record first of January. Money is coming in as capital. Record here capital. The amount that was in cash form was twenty thousand. So under the cash column, indicate twenty thousand. The amount that was in bank for the bank or in check was ten thousand. 10,000 was deposited in the bank. So you record it as a receipt. The cash amount, put it under the cash column. The bank, put it under the bank column like that. And that transaction is recorded. We go to the next transaction, which is on second. His friend, John, lend him 5,000 cash. Who can tell me on which side are we going to record that amount? His friend, John lend him 5,000 cash. The question you need to ask yourself, 
Was it a receipt or a payment? That is basically what we need to ask ourselves as far as the cash book is concerned. So, is it a receipt? Credit it on the other side of uh, the other side cash. Here. Yeah. Why? Why have you? Uh, because it's a liability. No, 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 no. When we come to cash book, uh, we don't focus on the issue to do with the liability. Our uh, issue okay. here is just, did we receive money or did we pay money? Full stop. So the 5,000, did we receive or did we pay? We received. We received. We received. You recorded. So we it. Did. it should be debited. Oh, That's okay. Done. I understand now. Okay. It is money coming in from John, eh? and that it is 5,000. So cash book, we are not completing the double entry here. We are simply talking about whether we received or we paid the cash. That's that. Understood, understood. Okay, that's great. On that, paid rent, 3,000 by check. So that will become now a, a receipt or a payment? Mm -hmm. A payment. A payment. A payment. On the payment side, that of January, what we paid is rent, and in this case, it was by check. So we record it under bank. So it was a bank payment. It was a bank payment. Record it in the bank column. Mm -hmm. On the fourth, mm -hmm. cash sales worth 1,000 was paid directly to the bank. Cash sales worth 1,000 was paid directly to the bank. First of all, is it a receipt or a payment? That is where we start from. <clears throat> Somebody to try? When you sell, do you receive cash or do you pay? Cash sell. Yes, when you buy, sorry, when you sell, yeah? When you sell, when you sell, do you receive cash or do you pay? Mwalimu, you receive cash. So it is a receipt. That is yes. correct. When you sell, when you make a sale, you receive. You receive. So it is a receipt. That is point number one. Now, the other issue here, it was cash sales, but it was paid directly in the bank. Where was it received? That is now the question. Did we receive it in cash or did we receive it in the bank? In the bank, sir. Yes, that money did not uh, or was not deposited in cash. Yes, we sold it in cash form, but it was immediately taken to the bank. So it is considered to have been received in the bank, in the bank. So come here and say on 4th of January, this money is coming from sales and it is how much? 1,000, it was received in the bank. It was cash sales, but immediately deposited in the bank. Then on the fifth, Paris adapter paid him two thousand by a check. Paris adapter paid the Thomas two thousand through a check. So a receipt or a payment? A receipt. A receipt. We received the money. This is on uh, on fifth of January. And it's coming in from Paris, 2,000 by a check. So it is going to go to the bank. That check will be deposited to the bank. On sixth, he paid motor vehicle expenses of 1,000 by cash. Just know that that one becomes a, a payment. We are told paid, paid. So we go to the payment side. The card it is on 6th of January to pay for motor vehicle expenses. Motor vehicle expenses. And they were worth a thousand. It was by, by cash. A thousand by cash. On 7th, repaid John. 4,000 cash, repaid John, 
Are we paying or receiving money from John? We are paying. We are paying. So we are calling on the payment time. The person we are paying is John. The amount is 4,000. We are putting it. So you put it under the column. Then on A, it took 2,000 out of cash here on cash box and paid it into the bank. He took money from cash and then he went and he deposited into the business bank account. That or such kind of a transaction, we normally call it a contra entry. A contra entry. Contra entry meaning that it is affecting the receipt and the payment at the same time. And a contra entry will occur when money is not moving out of the business or into the business, eh? when money is changing from the bank to cash. There was some man who had to attack this. Don't worry. So I was discussing about the issue of contra entry. A contra entry will arise whereby we are not making any payment and we are not receiving any money. Yeah? So in that case, it is either we are moving money from the cash to the bank or we are transferring the cash at the bank into cash in hand. So any of those two transactions, either taking money from cash to bank or from bank to cash, we normally call them a contra entry. It is a transaction where money is moving either from cash to bank. So it is like moving your money from left hand to the right hand. It is still in your hands. It is still in your hands. It has not moved out and it has not moved into the business. So it is still in the business but we are only changing either from cash to bank or from bank to cash. So in that case, it is going to be recorded on both sides. So in that case, if you read carefully, he took 2,000 cash and he paid it into the bank. So on the receipt side, you record where it is received. It was paid into the bank, so it is the bank that is receiving 2,000, and that money is from cash. It is the bank that is receiving. Yeah? So on the receipt side, record where it is received. 2,000 is started from cash. That is on one, is on A. Contract, C means it is a contract entry. And then on the same date, 8th of January, cash is paid or cash is reducing because we are taking it to the bank. So on the payment side, we consider that cash is reducing or it is paying out money, even though the money is going to the bank. So we must record here that there is a money out of cash. So you come here and record 2,000. Remember, on the payment side, it is the cash that is paying because it is the one that is reducing. And you record here where it is going, it is going to the bank, going to the bank like that. So it is going to appear on the payment, the account that reduced. On the receipt, the account that increased. That is how we treat a contra entry. That is how we treat a contra entry. It must appear on both sides. Where it was received, record it there. Where it was paid out, record it there. Contra entry. Then we go to nine, bought furniture, a thousand and paid by check. Bought furniture, bought furniture. Anytime you buy, you pay. Anytime you buy, in terms of cash, you pay, you pay. So it is going to be a payment. It's going to be a payment. Nine of January, what you paid for furniture, what you paid for is furniture, and we are told by check, one thousand. Put it under the bank column. 
on 15 paid business insurance premium, 1,000 via cash. Pay, so it is a payment. What did we pay? Insurance. We paid insurance, 1,000 cash. Put it under cash order. Then on 20th, we did 2,000 cash from bank for business use. So we are withdrawing now from the bank to cash. If it is for business use, it is money withdrawn from the bank and deposited in the cash. It is withdrawn from the bank and deposited into the cash. So what do you do? This is another contra entry. This is another contra entry. From bank to cash, from cash to bank, all those are contra entries. They must be captured in the both sides. Now here, the question you ask yourself is this. Which account is receiving? Is it cash or bank? If you read carefully, it was withdrawn from the bank. So the bank is the one that is reducing, so it is paid. So you come here, let me start with that side. The current 20th of January, the bank is paying out. It is reducing by 2,000, and that money is going to put into bracket C, contra entry. The account that is reducing is the one that you credit. Then cash received the same 2000 here under the cash column. You record where the money is coming from, bank. And you record the same date, 20th of January. 20th of January. So that is how you treat it. You receive it in cash, you pay it from the bank, and it is sorted. Last three, paid wages in cash, 4000 paid wages in cash, 4,000. This is which date, 30th of January. What you paid, record it as the payment, and then it is cash for four. Well, through with the posting the entries into the cash book. The other thing you needed to note in the cash book, we don't record anything on credit. If, for example, you are told sold goods on a credit, Never, ever, ever put it in the cash book. Any credit transaction should not be found in the cash book. We shall only record it the date the payment will be made. But the date of buying, we don't record it if it is on credit. We shall wait until the date when the payment is going to be made. That is when we shall record it in the cash book. Basically, the cash book talks about transactions involving cash. If it is on credit, there was no cash that was involved. No cash was paid out or no cash was received. Therefore, it's not fine in its way into the cash. That is how you do it. The next question you will be told is to build balancing. Balancing it is very simple. You balance each account separately. That is the cash separately, the bank separately. How do you do it? You will come to the cash on the receipt side record all the cash that was received. 20,000 capital, 5,000 from John, and 2,000 from the bank. So what is the total cash did we receive? How, how much cash did we receive in that period? 25, 27, we received a total of 27. Then on the payment side, how much cash did we pay? This is one, this is five, seven, Eight, twelve. We received twenty-seven. We paid twelve. Therefore, we have a balance. We have a balance. We received twenty-seven. We have paid twelve thousand. There is a balance. So we shall come here and say on that end of uh, January, the cash has got a balance carried down of how much? Twenty-seven minus twelve, which gives us fifteen thousand. We have got 15,000 balance so that this side can total 27,000. This side can also total 27,000. Sorry, on cash, 27,000. Our cash is balanced. We must find out how much is the balance. So you take what we receive, we minus what we have paid, the difference is the balance. And actually, it is making logic. Is making logic. If this is all that we received and this is all that we paid, 
then the difference should be the balance that we have. We also do the same to the bank. I add all that I received, I subtract all that I paid, then I should get what is in my, uh, what is the balance in my bank account. So here, I started with 10,000 capital, I added 1,000, 2,000, 2,000. This gives me 15,000. So the total cash that I saved in my bank account is 15,000. How much did I spend from the bank? Three plus one, that is four, that is seven. 15 minus seven, we shall have about 8,000. 8,000. It is, it's, Malimu, well, it's six. It's 6,000. Oh, 6,000. Yeah. So we shall have 15 minus 6. 9,000. 9, 9, that is our balance. Give us a total of 15,000. Yeah. So you add what the side that has more. For the cash, for the cash, the receipt will always have more. For the cash, the receipt will always have more or under very rare circumstances, the two, the receipt and the payment will be equal. Under very rare, and actually I've never seen it when they are equal. But for the bank, it is possible the payments can exceed the receipts. And that is what we call the bank overdraft. For the bank, it is possible for the payments to exceed the receipts. That is a bank overdraft. But for cash, there is no single day the payments will exceed the receipts. Either they are equal, that is now under very rare circumstances, or the receipts will always have more than the payments. You cannot spend cash that you don't have. For cash, that is the rule. You cannot spend cash that you don't have. Either you spend the entire cash so you have a zero balance, or you spend less than what you have so that you have got zero balance. That is the rule. But for the bank, you can negotiate and uh, they can allow you to do overdraw. Overdraw. So, note that. And that is all about that question. That is all about that question. That question was. Uh, this 15 and 9K, where they are coming from, they are balancing figures. Huh? They are balancing figure. For cash, it is 15,000. How did I get 15,000? I added all the cash that I received. I subtracted all the cash that I paid. All the cash that I received was 20 plus 5, that is 25, plus 2, 27. We have it 27 here. Then I subtracted the total here. 1 plus 4 is 5. 7, 7 plus this one is 8. 8 plus 4, it is 12. So I took. 27,000 minus 12,000, that is where I got my 15, which is a balance. Balance, what is remaining after I've paid all my payments or I've made all my payments. The same case for the bank. What I received in the bank, I minus what I paid in check form. Then the difference is my bank balance. I hope you got it right now. That's great. And that is all about the two column cash. That is all about two column cash book. You can note this. These are the same question uh, in November 2021. Eh? Look for that question in November 2021. Also, it was testing about the two column cash book so that you can try. So that you can try. But in that question, you are not given the, the capital, you are given the balance broke down. Remember this balance that we have crossed with here. When we start the new month, it is going to come here as first of, this was January, first of February, we shall capture it as balance brought down. The cash is 15,000, so it is going to come here as 15,000. The bank, the balance was 10,000. What we close with in the month of January, remember the next day, February will be starting, start with that balance, and it is known as brought down. The opening balance is brought down. But here it was the closing because it was at the end of January. Yeah? It is carried down. Carried down means closing. Yeah? Lot down <coughs> means opening balance. Go to November 21st. 
that one. There was also something about the Kukalam Kashi. I want us to proceed to two column cash book. Sorry, not two, but three column cash book. Three column cash book is this, the same as the two column cash book with a very small extension of discount. There is something we call cash discounts. The cash discounts. We incorporate them in the three column cash book. And a cash discount, it is a discount that is given or allowed by either the business to the customer or received by the business from the suppliers, the discounts. And so far, we have mentioned them severally in our previous discussion. That is the discount allowed and the discount received. The discount allowed and the discount received, they are known as cash discounts. They are discounts that are extended to the person who is buying the goods for prompt payment. You are given these discounts because you are paid in time, because you are paid in time. And these are the only discounts. Remember, we have got three categories of discounts. The cash discounts, we have got the trade discount and the quantity discount. The trade discount is normally given to a trader a trader is the person who is buying goods with the intention of reselling them. So the person will be given discount so that in the process of reselling, he can be able or she can be able to get higher profit. So a discount that is extended to a trader so that he or she can get higher profits, normally call it trade discount. Then we have got the quantity discount, which is the discount that is extended to the buyer to encourage bulk purchasing, to encourage bulk purchasing. So the more you buy, the more the discount. So that discount is known as the quantity discount. But in our case here, our focus will only be on the cash discount. The discounts that are allowed to the customer or given to the business by the suppliers because or to encourage prompt payment. So you will find a case whereby you are told I have sold goods for the 2,000 to you on the credit, but if you pay within two days, I'm going to give you a discount of 10%. If you fail to pay within those two days, then you have to pay the whole amount, which is 2,000. So what the buyer of the goods will do is try as much as possible to pay within, within those two days so that he can get the discount. So it is normally given to encourage prompt payment for the goods bought on credit, cash discount. So they can either be discount allowed when the business is selling goods to customers. So discount allowed, it is the business that is allowing our customers to encourage the customers to pay from trade. And also we have got the discount received. Discount received, it is normally received from the supplier by the business. So it is our business receiving that discount from the suppliers. So the suppliers are giving us that discount to encourage us to pay them within a scheduled time period. To encourage us to pay within the scheduled time period. So as we have always said, the discount allowed, we normally take it as an expense because when I allow a discount to you, you are going to pay me less. You are going to pay me less. So in one way or another, I have gone an income. I have lost an income because you are going to pay me less. That amount that I lost as a result of the discount, I treat it as an expense. But when we talk about the discount received, we consider it as a revenue. Why? Because we are going to make a saving. When a supplier gives us a discount, which we call it discount received, we are going to pay the supplier less. So in the process, we are going to make some savings. That savings, we normally consider it as if we have received an income, we have received an income from them. So that is the explanation about the discount. So the discounts that we are going to talk about here, discount allowed and discount received. Discount allowed, will it be on the receipt side or the payment side? One of them is on the receipt and the other one is on the payment. So between discount allowed and the discount received, 
which one will be on there? This side. Somebody to try. Malim. Yes. I think this count received will be on the receipt side. Anybody with a contrary opinion? You have said that the discount received should be here on the receipt side. Anybody with a contrary opinion or idea? So you all agree with her? Personally, I would. The discount received will be here. Why do we put the discount received on the payment side? This is the reason. Remember. Because. Uh -huh, uh -huh, go on. It's because um, it's a discount received, meaning you've allowed that discount. <laughs> I think I'm confused. It means the trader has allowed that discount. I mean, there's a, a, a loss, rather. Yes, supplier, sorry, yes. It is not a loss to us. Uh, to us, it is a gain. Remember, I've told you always, when we shall be in this class, we assume that we are the owner of the business. Eh? We just fit into the okay. shoes of the owner of the business. So to us, who are the owners of the business, it is not a loss, it is a gain. This county received, we have gained. Because if we were to pay the supplier 10,000, the supplier has given us a discount of 1,000, we shall only pay 9,000. So we have gained. Mm -hmm. 1,000, we have gained 1,000. So discount received as so it's any, it is okay. a gain. That's why we call it as a revenue. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, so it is supposed to be here. The reason why we take it to the payment side is this. Remember, this discount is originating from the suppliers. Huh? The suppliers, we are supposed to pay them. Eh? It is coming from the suppliers, so these suppliers, we are supposed to pay them. So in the process of paying, maybe John, eh? John can give us a discount. So we can pay John, maybe we are supposed to pay John 4,000. John has given us a discount of 500. Eh? So we shall come here and record, we have paid John 3,500 and we have received a discount of 500. Eh? Or for 500 and 500, uh, so 5,000. We have paid John 500. By cash, and in the process, we don't have balance to John. And because we don't have a balance to John, the 500 now we consider it as a discount received. So let me be simple here. Discount received is on the payment side because it shall be recorded when the payment is made. Yeah? So when we are paying a payment to a particular supplier, that is when the discount will be received. So note, we are paying. So we pay and then we receive the discount. So we shall record the amount that we have paid and the amount that we have received the discount. So the two must be on the same side. Because it comes as a result of paying, then it should be on the payment side. On this side, we shall have discount allowed. Why discount allowed? Discount allowed, we normally allow our customers. So when our customers will be paying us, in the process, we should also capture the discount. So the customers will be paying us, so we shall be receiving from the customer. So as we receive cash from the discount, so from the customers, we also record how much discount we have allowed them. So the two reasons. For discount allowed, we normally allow our customers, and our customers, we are supposed to receive money from them. So as we receive money from the customers, we also record the discount allowed, if any. Here it is discount received because we pay the suppliers. So as we are paying the suppliers, we record also the discount received if it's any. Hi. So Malim, just to understand it correctly, for example, the way you have you have indicated there. So when I'm recording the transaction, if they if it say um discount received, or let's say if I I I bought goods from John, yeah. I'm supposed to pay John four thousand. Yeah. But he allowed me a discount of 500. So I will record there John 35 and then discount uh, received 500. Yes. That's, what, that's how. Okay. Yes, we shall have a, a, a separate column for discount. Eh? That, actually, that's why it is known as a three column cash. Eh? This one is a two column cash because for amounts, 
we record them in columns on either side. We have got two columns for recording amount here and two columns for recording amount here. That's why it is known as a two column cash. But for a three column cash book, we shall be introducing the third column in either side. So here we shall have discount received, cash and bank column. So we shall be having three columns on each side. That's why it is known as a discount. Let us actually illustrate that. For the column cash book, For three column cash book, we shall be having. Sorry. The date, the details, right here, the discount allowed. Discount allowed. Then you also have the cash bank. Date, details, discount allowed, cash bank. That is the receipt side. Double nine. The payment side, we shall have the date, the details, the discount received, just abbreviations, then the cash and the bank. So that is how it is going to appear. We are on this side, record receipts. CR on this side, record payment. That is a very common cash. Three column cash. And indicated the other one also it was a two column cash. So you can come here, put to indicate that this amount of hours are going to be in shillings on these columns for amounts. So we have got three columns for amounts here, three columns for amounts here. That's why it is known as a three column cash. Three column cash. The second question will serve as an example. For December 2019, 6A, that question can serve as an example. It says that the following financial transactions took place at Bosira Shoes dealers, dealers shop during the month of October 2017. First of October, opening balances, cash, that 2400 debit bank 19800 credit. Those balances you capture them the way they appear there. The one that is on the debit, put it on the debit. And remember, they are opening balances. Opening balances, they are captured as brought down, brought down. So you come here and say, first of October, under the details, balance brought down. This is the debit side. So between cash and bank, which one had a debit balance? Plus? Cash. Then for bank, it was on the credit. Take it to this side. Record the same date, first of October. The balance goes down. The bank was 19,800. Remember when it is a credit balance, that was a bank overdraft. The payments were more than the receipts in the previous month. 
Remember, this balance is brought forward from the previous month. So the previous month, the payments had exceeded the receipts. So we had a bank overdraft, which is a credit balance. We take it there. Then we consider the transactions that occurred during the month. 2nd of October, borrowed 72,000 cash from Wafula. We are borrowing. But as I said, when it is cash, we don't bother about the issue to the liabilities or uh, the credit card. Just focus on, in terms of cash, was it received or was it cash paid? So if we borrowed from Wafula, then automatically in terms of cash, we received the cash from Wafula. We received the cash from Wafula. So we shall come here and record 2nd of October. From who? From Wafula. How much? 7200 cash. Put it under cash. Go to the next. On four. Boat. When you buy, you pay. When you buy, you pay, unless it is on credit. Here we are told, bought stock, 19,000 on credit. Under the credit, we don't have any business with that transaction on that date. We cannot capture it in the cash book. It is forbidden. Cash book is meant for cash transaction. If there was no cash that was paid, no cash that was received, under that transaction, just ignore. That was just a distractor. It was just a distractor there. To test whether you know that credit entries are not entered in the cash book. So if it is going to be paid later on, then we shall record it then. But on this date, no cash in, no cash out. We don't have it in our cash book. The next one is deposited that 1650 cash into the bank. This is a contra entry, my friends. This is a contra entry. As we said, you have to record it twice. Where it was received, record it here. Where it was uh, subtracted from or withdrawn from, record it as a payment. In this case, we deposited that 1650 cash in the bank. So it was deposited in the bank. So the bank received this money. So we put it here, that T1650, that 1650 has been deposited in the bank, has been received in the bank, and it is coming from cash. This is on 5th of October. Then the same date, because this money has been withdrawn from cash, cash is making a payment into the bank, that can be on record. 5th of October, this cash of that one, 650, has been withdrawn from the cash. And in the details, we write where it went. It went to the bank. Here we write where it is coming from. Here we write where it is going. Yeah? Details here, yeah, this side, where the money is coming from. Details for payment side, what are we paying? Or where is the money going? Brenda? Malim, would you please clarify for me that uh, for you? Speak a bit louder, please. I'm saying, uh, I'm yeah. getting a bit confused in that uh, transaction. Huh? Yes. On how to record cash bank. Uh -huh. yeah, just explain. Uh. I'm saying. When it is a contra entry, you know, we say contra entry involves cash and bank. Eh? Either we are withdrawing from the bank cash, or we are taking money from cash and depositing it into the bank. Eh? Either way, it is going to be recorded twice. Here, what you need to be keen on, eh? remember here we have the receipt side. The receipt side, you record where that money was received. Like in this case, we deposited money in the bank. So in the bank account, this money was received. On the receipt side, therefore, put it under the bank account. But here you write where it is coming from. Eh? You write where it is coming from. It is coming from cash, but it is a receipt in the bank. When you come to this end, eh? it is actually a payment when it comes to cash. 
cash it is going to be reducing by that one billion six fifty because we are taking that money and uh, we have deposited in the bank. So it is reducing, so we consider it as a payment. And here you record where it is going, it is going to the bank. So you record it as a payment, cash, but under the details, you record where it is going. Here, you record where it is received, but in here, you record where it is coming. Understood, Brenda? Yes, thank you. Yes. On the seven, there is another funny transaction there. Returned stock worth 43.50 to Asha. We returned some stock. The question here, when we return stock, is there anywhere where we shall receive or pay money? No. No. We just returned stock. No cash was received. No cash was paid. So that transaction also should not be in the cash book. If there was no cash involved, don't put it in the cash book. Don't put it in the cash book. So in that case, then we say that goods returned to cash, we have not been refunded money, we have not paid any money, leave it. Paid telephone expense at a 300 using check. That is a payment. That is a payment of October. What we pay is the receipt. Sorry, is it a receipt or telephone? Telephone. It's a 300 by check. So it is in the bank. On uh, nine, made credit purchases worth 2,800 from RBD. From RBD. This one also should not be recorded. It is a credit. It is a credit. It is a credit entry. No, should not be recorded in the cash. Now, we go to the next one, which is on 10. Received a check of that 6,900 as rent income, we received, so it is a receipt. Come here and record it as rent 10. We are receiving this money as rent. How much? That 6,900 in the check form. So it is going to be in the bank, that 6,900. The bank. On 14, made credit sales at 24,300 to Secundo. Credit sales, that is another distractor, leave it. Now, on 17th, we must do something. Paid by cash, the full amount due to Asha. Now you must go back and see the kind of transactions that we had with Asha. Remember, the first transaction with Asha occurred on date on date fourth on fourth eh? on date four on fourth of October we bought goods worth nineteen thousand nine hundred. That was not the only transaction. On uh, seven we returned goods worth thirty three forty three fifty to Asha. Now remember when you return goods it reduces your debt. If we had bought goods worth 19900 and then later on we returned goods worth 4350 then the 19900 we should subtract 4350 4350 we are not going to pay this one we deduct it from 19900 can you deduct that figure 19900 minus 4350 how much we owe asha 15 by 50 15 by 50. That is now the full amount that we need to pay. 15 by 50. It is a payment. You come here and record on the 18th of October. We paid Asha. By what? Cash. By cash. cash. Yes, come here, cash, and write 15 by 15. That is the amount that was due. Asha, and that is the full amount. Then on the 
27 received in cash uh -huh, the amount due from for a second or less two percent is come. So we shall have to do a small calculation. How much did we sell to for a second? 24, 24, 300. Then we are told here, this person is going to enjoy a discount of 2%. So can you do 2% of 24, 300? How much is this? Two percent. Sorry? Four, eight, Four, eight, Four, eight, Remember, for a second, we sold goods to him. If we relate to transactions that occurred on 14, we sold goods to for a second. So when the for a second is going to be paying us, he's going to receive this. We are going to allow the discount. We are going to allow. So it is money received, but as we receive that money from for a second, we have allowed the person a discount of what? For a second. So you can be on the audit like this. Uh, 27th of October, right here, or a second of the discount allowed, you put here 486. And then now, how much are we going to receive from the person? It's going to be 24, 300 minus this. 23, 814. 23. 8.14, that is all about that transaction, and it was in cash form. That is how you record the discount. The discount that was allowed and the cash that was received. Then uh, paid by check, the amount due to RB, less 4% cash discount. Let us look at the date we bought books from RB on credit. That was on 9. Made credit purchases was 2800. So the amount was 2800. This is what we want to pay. And we have actually been given a discount of 4% of 2800. That gives you a discount of how much? Four percent of twenty eight hundred. Eight thirty two. Eight hundred and thirty two. So you come here and record the date, which is on twenty uh, nine. We pay or we are paying up As we are paying up we are receiving a discount from him of eight hundred and thirty two. So you record it as a discount. See. So how much are we going to pay? Take the total amount that was payable, 2800, deduct the discount received, get the amount payable. Yes? 19968. 19968, it was uh, by check. 19968. The last transaction deposited all the cash available in the business into the bank except 25,000. We deposited all the amount of cash that we had in the business, but we left behind 25,000. How do we handle that? That one is interesting. We deposited all the amount that we had in cash but uh, we left it behind 25,000. To do that question, what you require to do, come to the cash of the receipt side, add all the cash that you receive. How much can you add for me this? 32,400, 72,200, and 23,814. That will give us the total cash that we received in that period. 129,414. Nine four hundred and four. Four oh four. Now that is not what we have. Sorry, four one four. Four one four. 
This is the total cash that we receive, but it is not the cash that we have. Remember this cash that we received, part of it has been used to pay this. Well, this it is 128,414. Confirm? 128,414. Okay, that has got by that. I hope you will confirm. Listen here. This is the total cash that we received. The balance that we started with, we received some money from Wafula. We received this amount of money from or September. But that is not what we have. That money, part of it has been used to pay or has been deposited in the bank, as indicated here. Part of it has been paid to Asia. So can you give me the total cash payment? Add the two, money that we deposited in the bank, money that we paid Asha by cash, how much did we pay using cash in the total? 47,200. 47,200. So what you do, the balance that we have, as this that we want to record this transaction is 128,414. We subtract what we have paid so far, it will give us the balance. How much is the balance? Is everyone getting 128,404? 128, 128, yes. Okay, thanks. Hiya, give me the balance. If we receive 128,414, we have paid 47,400. How much cash do we have at hand? Now, that is the balance. Sorry? 81,214. That is now the balance that we have now. But now we have been instructed, as we make the deposit into the bank, we should leave our behind 25,000. So if this is the money that we have in the cash box as balance, eh? How much are we going to take to the bank if we are going to leave behind 25,000? So we are going to deposit? 56, 214, 214, 214. That is the money that we are going to deposit. So in short, that statement was asking, deposited 56, 214 from cash in the bank. But now they wanted you to do some computation to go how much or how that figure the variety. So whenever you are told that you deposited cash into the bank, except your law is very simple. Take the cash received, subtract the cash paid, then subtract what you are leaving. The remaining balance is now what you are going to deposit, and it is again going to be a contra entry. It is going to be a contra entry because it is cash bank. So you come here and record the date. Which is in 31st. 31st of October. Where is it being received? It is in the bank. I write it starting with where it is being received. Eh? Write the amount. It is received in the bank or it is going to be deposited in the bank so the bank will receive it. Then here you write where it is coming from. It is that. Uh, Deposited in the bank, but coming from cash. Then on the other side, record the same date. It is now cash that is paid. Cash is the one that is reducing. That money is going to the bank. Contra entry, put it under cash. It's fixed to 14. And that is the end of your three column cash. But you need to balance it. You need to balance it. For the cash, we have already done the balance. Huh? Balance carried down for the bank, for the cash solid, it was 25,000. Remember, we have deposited everything leaving behind 25,000. That 25,000 is the balance in short. Huh? When we go to our cash box, that is what we'll get. That is what we'll get. And if you do the computation, you'll get that. 
Then you can do the balancing for the bank. Add the bank receipts, subtract the bank payments, we get the balance. What we receive minus what we paid. And you start with what we paid. What we received, sorry. For the cash, it is going to be 128.414, as you told me. Anybody who has got the total for bank receipts? Malimo, just before uh, we go to cash the bank, yes. why are we posting 25,000 that we were supposed to be left with? I thought it would be on the receipt side. No, we are balancing. I'm yeah. just curious. We are balancing, yeah? We are balancing. Uh -huh. See, we are told here, yeah. behind this, we left behind 25,000, yeah? We left yes. behind in cash 25,000. So, that's why you 25,000 excess. You know, the balance carried down is normally indicated on the side that has less. Yeah? Yes, the receipt oh. has got 25,000 more than the payment. So, we are putting it here for balancing purposes, yeah? but it is a debit balance, remember? Okay, yes. that makes sense. Okay, yes. yeah, okay. For the bank, the receipt is totaling how much? I'm getting 124, 764. Okay. What about the payments? 19,800, 8,319, 968. If you add all those bank payments, they are totaling how much? 